Okay, when you get the phone, just power it up and uh, eventually it'll come up to the screen. And uh, as the animation is showing you, just touch that and it'll do do thing <laughs> the Android right there. And it, assuming that you already have a Google account, you should go ahead and sign in and put your uh, Google email address and password here as I have done through the edit <laughs> and then click done sign in um, I don't really have a cell signal here usually so I'll, have, I'll probably have to connect to Wi-Fi which adds another thing that I can show you So you can see that failing the cell network, um, it'll come up with this screen and you can connect to Wi-Fi and it should scan automatically. And as you can see, put in mine and uh, I'll put in my password and then hit done and connect. Okay, hit next, and of course you'll have to put in the password again because it failed the network the first time. I'll go ahead and do that, and then hit done, sign in. Now that it's on the Wi-Fi, it should be able to go through pretty quickly. Click OK. Choose the applications that you want to install, probably uh, most of these. Um, I'm not going to do it right now, just to save time but you know, YouTube, Google Voice, Google Maps for navigation, you'll want that. And then click OK. You can uncheck these if you like. Just click Next. And if you already have an Android device, had it before with uh, applications that you purchased and downloaded through the, the market, when you do this, it will restore the applications that you had. That's what this first one is for. Then go ahead and click next. I recommend leaving the, both of those checked. Okay, and then we finish the setup. And you get your desktop. Now because this is a phone that I'm selling to you, um, I, there are some applications that I've pre-installed which have never run. <laughs> uh, one of those, um, I, I do the clocker, um, clock widget, <clears throat> and also root explorer right here. Um, you, what you might want to use with this, go ahead and allow super user is uh, go into your SD SD card um, and then in here you'll see apps games and zips zips is the Google Apps and uh, time app um, kernel that that I use on the Evo in order to uh, save battery life um, I put it here you may want to update the the nightly uh, cyanogen mod on it and you can put it wherever you want but then uh, after you get done flashing the ROM, flash this one too. And, and uh, of course Google Apps, um, you probably won't have to do it again, but whenever you do the nightlies, usually in ROM Manager you would check uh, to in, go ahead and download the Google Apps too. It's been a while since, say, 6.13, since uh, um, one that works was updated. But this one, this is the one that works. Okay, and then also <coughs> in Apps, you can reinstall the ones that like Root Explorer and any of the other ones. There's also some extra ones like uh, the Panorama Maker here, it's the best that I've found. Um, you know, some other stuff. Some of this is a tape machine. Some of it is already in, uh, installed, like Titanium Backup. If you had used Titanium Backup to back up your apps from your old Android phone, you would now be able to, without even uh, downloading again, you'd be able to do the restore. Okay, and um, that's one of the ones that you'll see on here. Uh, titanium backup, you can see there. And I put swipe installer. This is the swipe beta. 
So if you need to go to swipe.com and sign up for the beta if you want to use swipe on this phone. Um, it doesn't come with CyanogenMod. Um, so when you open this, it'll ask you to put in your beta account. It's free. It's and I, as far as I know, anyone can do it. You don't have to be a special geek or anything. <laughs> Raw Manager comes with uh, CyanogenMod these days. And um, what was another one that I did? Most of this just came with HDMI. Um, this is the one that does HDMI mirroring. If you connect the HDMI port to a, an LCD TV or an HD TV, um, it will show everything that's on here. The stock only shows pictures and videos. You, you couldn't do play apps. I mean, you couldn't play games or any, use apps or browse the web or anything like that. Um, and CyanogenMod uh, kernel will also handle Bluetooth, so if you wanted to connect the Bluetooth device, like a keyboard and mouse, <clears throat> you could do that. Um, oh, and SMB, um, you would to do th this is so that you can access your PC from here, and I don't mean desktop sharing because that pretty much sucks on on uh, phones because the screen is so small. But this would access your files, so I just add, put the name of your PC, it says server, but whatever, your PC and the username that you use. Um, if you have a password, put the password. And this is really cool because um, and actually PC to PC file sharing, if your uh, PC account doesn't have a password, it wouldn't let you access it. And so but this, this will, and it'll actually give you all the, the admin stuff if your user account is an admin. Okay, And um, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you want to make this phone look like it did, in the previous video that shows you know the gameplay and all that kind of stuff um, this is the launcher you just need to go into the um, <clears throat> the settings and ADW's launcher and change the all the stuff you know the settings like this to make it five that kind of stuff and that's pretty much it Okay, this is a quick video on uh, Wi-Fi tethering. It's built into CyanogenMod Mod 7, which even to, to run you have to be rooted anyway. But So it's pretty simple, just go into menu, settings, wireless networks, scroll down to tethering and portable hotspot, click on that, and you can choose either USB tethering or portable Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, this is probably the most convenient. <clears throat> However, USB tethering is awesome if you have a laptop or something like that. You, since you're jacked in USB, you're also charging the phone, which, you know, the, using 3G network or 4G network to provide internet access to your laptop is going to drain the battery a good bit, so it's a good good idea to, to use the USB. Um, however, if that's not the case, um, it also, it will only do one, you know, if you want to do the eight, like, a, like Sprint stock, you're going to have to pay the 35 bucks a month, <laughs> which I'm not willing to do. So anyway, and you can go into the settings and you can uh, check the box for that and configure this with a, a password or your own custom SSID, you know, can configure the security, which is, you know, current grade security, all that kind of stuff. And it's that simple. Um, of course, on the, the device, the laptop, PC, whatever you want to do, I use uh, to connect to the internet. It would just see the SSID that you created there, or else it would, I think it's something like Android or something like that. Uh, and and uh, stock, if you don't do any configurations, you just turn it on. It's going to be like that, and then no password. So just connect. Once it's connected, that's it. Your PC would get on just like your, any other uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. All right.